Hey guys, in this video I have the new STM32 based uh, 4-in-1 module from Banggood. Instead of using the Atmega 328P microcontroller, it uses the STM32 MCU, which means that it has more memory to store all of the protocols. The previous 4-in-1 module only had 32 kilobytes of onboard memory, and because of that, when the firmware was compiled for the 4-in-1, some protocols had to be left out. And if you wanted to use, for example, a protocol that was uh, used by the Ishin E10, you had to recompile it, you had to update the firmware and pick the specifically which protocol that you wanted to fit in there. This new 4-in-1 module has the STM32 F103 microcontroller. The onboard memory now is large enough to accommodate all the protocols, so technically you shouldn't need to flash it out of the box, but when new protocols are added, you'll eventually have to update it anyways but at least right from the get-go, everything should be included at the time of this video. So just to give you an idea how much more memory it has, it has four times the um, onboard memory compared to the Atmega 328P. So it has 128 kilobytes of onboard flash memory, large enough to store all the protocols as well as accommodate future updates to the firmware. In simple terms, the STM32 and the Atmega 328P, they are microcontrollers that interfaces with the transmitter and, and the four RF chips, the CC2500, the NRF24, A7105, and the CYRF6936. Since 2.2 of OpenTX, both these microcontrollers, the Atmega 328P and the 32, the STM32, are already supported in the firmware, so there really isn't anything you need to do other than making sure you get the latest version of OpenTX, which I'll show you later in this video. To the transmitter, there really isn't a difference whether you're using the Atmega 328P or the STM32 versions of the 4-in-1 module. As you can see, unlike the previous 4-in-1 module that I showed you, it's not just the bare board now, it actually comes in a very nice uh, injected molded case. It's branded under iRange X. It's the iRange X4 4 in 1 multi protocol STM32 TX multi module. It's pretty much set up and ready to go, just plug and play. It already comes in serial mode, so you don't have to do any soldering or anything. And as you can see, there is no dial. Protocol selection is done in the transmitter software, so you will have to make sure that you have the latest version of OpenTX that supports this multi module. So in this video, I'll show you how to download the latest version of OpenTX by downloading the companion software. Then we're gonna set up some radio profiles for the, a few of the transmitters that I own, like the uh, Turner G9XR Pro and the Tyrannus QX7. Pretty much any transmitter that runs OpenTX will be configured this way. And if you have the older 4-in-1 multi-module which uses the Atmega 328P, the instructions will apply as well. After creating some radio profiles, we'll use the companion software to download OpenTX with the specific build that supports the multi-module. I'll show you how to flash your transmitter with OpenTX using a method that's pretty foolproof. Then we'll configure your transmitter settings, make sure that's in AETR mode. I'll show you how to create a simple four channel model setup that should work with most quadcopters. And finally, I'll show you how to bind it with your quadcopter. So the first thing we need to do is download OpenTX Companion. Now the Companion software allows you to not only download OpenTX firmware, it allows you to download, uh, for example, sound files, it'll let you configure models, it'll let you backup models, it'll even let you flash the firmware itself. We're gonna flash the firmware to the Tyrannus a different way. The Companion software also has a built-in simulator, so if you wanna practice programming models and working through the menus, you can do that as well. Go to the news section, and this is where you can find the latest version of OpenTX, and at the time of this video, it is RC15N368. Make sure you download the latest version because it'll have all the updates and whatnot. So click on that and you'll be brought to the release notes, and here you'll find really inf important information about the firmware release. Make sure you read everything. It'll also give you all the known issues of the firmware, as well as all of the changes since the last version of the firmware. At the very bottom of the release notes, you'll see the download links. And the first thing you want to download is the SD card contents. And the SD card contents actually has all the files, like sound files and whatnot, that you need to have on your uh, micro SD card. So download that, download the latest version of that. And at the bottom, you'll see a link to OpenTX Companion. You can download the Windows version, Mac, or Linux. I'm going to download the Windows version for now, but 
use the version that runs on your operating system that runs on your computer they work pretty much the same regardless if you're on Mac or PC very very minor differences between them but if you do run Windows you may need certain runtime files in order for it to make it run on a Mac it just runs without downloading anything extra once you download OpenTX Companion and the SD card contents unzip the SD card contents and then we're going to transfer it to the micro SD card Select all the folders and files and then right click and choose copy. We're going to copy this over to a micro SD card. I'm using a 1 gigabyte micro SD card but you can use a 2 gig or 4 gig. It doesn't have to be too big because you're not storing a lot of information. 1 gig should be sufficient. Next you want to install OpenTX Companion so double click on the executable and run through the installation process by just clicking next next next. All the default options should be fine. Once it's done installing, hit the finish button and then launch OpenTX Companion. You may get this error message but we'll deal with that later. But anyways, click OK and then we're going to create a new radio profile. So go into the settings option and then choose add radio profile. First thing is we'll give it a profile name. So I'm going to name this Tyrannus QX7. You can name it anything you want. Make sure you select the proper radio type. So in this case, it's Tyrannus X7. Next thing you want to do in the build options is that you want to make sure that it has the multi-module selected because this is very important. Without this, your multi-module won't work. You have to select a specific build of the OpenTX firmware, firmware that supports the multi-module. And at the very bottom, you want to select your default channel order, AETR. And I'm going to use it in mode 2. So you have to put these settings in there as well. And the next thing you want to do is you want to download the firmware. So just hit this download button here. Just double check that the proper firmware is selected. Then you want to click download firmware. If you get this error message, in fact, it's very easy to fix. It's just an option in the settings. So we're going to go OK, OK, and then we're going to go back into the settings for your radio profile. So go into application settings and you want to check off use OpenTX firmware nightly builds as well as use companion nightly builds. And this should get rid of all the error messages that you get when you run OpenTX companion as well as download the firmware. So we're going to try that download again. So go to download, click download firmware and it should ask you where you want to save it. So we're going to save it temporarily in my downloads folder. It's also a very good idea to rename the file because it's so long. So I'm going to shorten the name a bit. I'm just going to name it X7 and then put the version number at the very end. File names that are too long will get truncated. It won't show up correctly on your transmitter while you're flashing the firmware. That's why it's a very good idea to shorten the name a bit. This way you can read it easier. I'm actually going to do another radio profile. So I'm going to do one for my Turner G9XR Pro because OpenTX also runs on the Turner G9XR Pro. I prefer this over ER Sky 9 x because this way all my transmitters are using the same software. Anyways, you want to make sure that multi-module is also selected and you have the proper radio type as well as the default channel order and the modes. You also want to double check the application settings and make sure that the nightly builds options are checked off here. When you're done, click OK to lock in the settings. Now I'm going to download the firmware for the 9XR Pro, so click the download button and double check that everything is correct. And we're also going to rename this like before. I'm going to shorten the name so that it's easier to read on the transmitter itself so the file name doesn't get truncated. And finally, I'm going to create another radio profile for my other Tyrannus, the Tyrannus X9D+. Run through the steps like that I showed you before by giving it a name, selecting the proper radio type. In this case, it's Tyrannus X9D+. Make sure that multi-module option is checked off and you have the AETR selected as well. Again, I'm going to download the firmware for this transmitter profile. So hit the download button and hit download firmware. And once again, we will shorten the name so that it's easier to read on the transmitter.
you can flash the transmitter firmware via OpenTX Companion. However, I find that method kind of cumbersome. Sometimes it doesn't work. So this method is always works for me. And what you have to do is copy the firmware file for your transmitter. So I'm, I'm updating the X7. So I'm gonna copy that into the firmware folder on my micro SD card. And then we're gonna take that micro SD card and we're gonna stick it in the Tyrannus QX7 and we're gonna update it from there. To get into the bootloader so that we can flash the firmware, push in both trim buttons while turning on your transmitter. Then you'll get the option to write firmware. Select that option and hold down the dial button and this should bring you a list of firmware that is available on the micro SD card. Make sure you select the right one. I'm gonna be updating the Tyrannus QX7 so I'm gonna select the one that says X7. Make sure you don't choose the wrong one because bad things could happen. Hold down the enter button and it should initiate the firmware flash. So hold it down again to confirm and it should take a few seconds to flash the firmware. It doesn't take that long. Now that you're done, hit the enter button once more and you should be able to exit the bootloader and it'll bring you into the OpenTX menu. And this is where you can double check that it did flash the, to the latest firmware. What you want to do is hold down the center button here on the left and you should be on radio setup. You want to skip to page 5. And on this page, this will show you the version that you're running on and it should match up with what you just flashed it with. So just double check that. Before we start programming a model, we're going to make sure that it is in the proper channel order. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you should be able to select your channel order. And in our case, we're going to be using AETR and I'm using mode 2 where rudder and throttles on the left stick and elevator and ailerons on the right stick. Now I'll show you how to create a simple four channel model that should work with most quadcopters. So select create model and what you want to do is go into the setup and give your model a name. Give it a more descriptive name than what I'm doing right now. Next we want to make sure we disable the internal RF module on the Tyrannuses specifically so make sure that the mode you have selected is off for the internal RF mo module and for the external RF module you want to have MULT selected and in this case we're gonna set one up for the Ishin E10 and that one uses the MJX protocol I believe and the sub protocol is E10. I usually turn on autobind with all my models, but not all of them will support it. But autobind basically allows the transmitter to automatically start uh, finding and binding with a model the minute you turn it on. The default inputs of AETR should be fine. Make sure they're all 100. And then in mixer, this, the default option should be fine as well. If one of your channels are reversed, this is where you can change it in the outputs. So select the ta channel you want and hit edit and go down to direction and select inverse and this will make the channel go in the opposite direction. So if your ailerons are going left when you move the stick right, this is where you can reverse it. And that should be it for a simple four channel setup for most quadcopters. Flashing on the Turing G9XR Pro is the exact same way. You make sure you stick in your micro SD card and then you hold in the inner trim buttons and then you power on the transmitter and that should cause it to go into the bootloader which allows you to write the firmware. Select the right firmware file and then what you want to do is hold down the menu button and this would initiate the flashing of the firmware. Hit menu again to confirm. Once it's done flashing, hit the exit button and then you should be able to quit the bootloader. Double check that you have the right version flash by going into the radio setup screen and this is where you can see the version that you have flashed it with. While you're in the radio setup menu, change your channel order to AETR and your preferred mode. I like to use mode 2.
Finding your mono is actually very straightforward. Connect your battery and then you can see that the light is flashing very fast. And on your transmitter, you want to initiate the bind and you will see the light go solid on your quadcopter. It means the quadcopter is bound to the transmitter and you can just stop the bind. Now you can test it by moving the throttle up and down. You're probably gonna ask if you should get the STM32 version if you already have the previous 4-in-1 module that has the AppMega 328P version. Unless you really plan to make use of every single one of the protocols available in the 4-in-1 module, the AppMega 328P version is still very useful. I don't use every single protocol that's available in the 4-in-1 firmware. For example, I don't need the FRSky. Uh, for uh, protocols. I don't so I don't compile the CC2500 chips in there and I don't need some of the other protocols which take up space you know like I don't own I don't physically own these quadcopters so there's no reason for me to have them compiled in there so if you don't need every single protocol compiled in all the time or you need PPM support the AppMega version is still a better option all the STM version buys you is more memory but if you don't already own a 4-in-1 module then get the STM32 in fact I think it's about the same price I think it's around $40 US and that's actually pretty good for what you're getting so the STM32 version of this form module is definitely an improvement it's a evolution I wouldn't say it's a revolution so if you're interested in picking one up there are going to be links in the description they'll take you there but anyways if you like what you see comment like or subscribe and I will see you in the next video